RX Television on RxMuscle.com. This is Iron Debate, all part of RX Muscle's Iron Road to the 2019 Olympia, powered by Chemical Warfare. Visit chemical-warfare.com. I'm your host, Sadiq Faruqi. This is the show that settles the score. We are going to be having these one-topic Iron Debates leading on through the Olympia. As we now introduce our panel first, we go to the Cape Coral Studios in Cape Coral, Florida, and meet Dave Palumbo. Dave, this is a topic we're going to be talking about. Ruli Winkler, yesterday, another Ruli Winkler progress video, and you wanted to discuss whether or not Ruli could bring that same level of conditioning they showed in his videos onto the Olympia stage. That's all we see. We see those Ruli <laughs> muscle shots. Maybe the best muscle shot of all time, right? Uh it yeah. Freaky. Just absolutely mind-boggling. Um, you have to say that this guy is one of the favorites to win the Mr. Olympia, and that's that's the debate. It's fun. It is entertaining. I know we as soon as we post these on our Instagram, one of the first comments we're going to see is, well, all that really matters is what happens on show day. I get that. But you know what? We're three and a half weeks till show day. Let's have some fun. Let's have some entertainment. Let's welcome our panelists first. We go to Ontario, Canada from the Fuad Abiyad recording studio. <laughs> Fuad Abiyad. Fuad has the record coming along. <laughs> How's it going, man? I'm on, uh, I'm on my 10th track. I'm almost done recording. <laughs> no, um, things are good, man. I got the headphones. You guys know I do the podcast now, so this is kind of my setup. But everything's good here, and uh, I'm ready to go. Now, you, you're, you're recording some great stuff. I know you and Luke Sando have been recording. So give yourself a plug. Uh, it's the Real Bodybuilding Podcast. I do one with Luke uh, called Bodybuilding and Bollocks. It's just a bunch of nonsense. Me and him <laughs> kind of shoot the shit. And then I do a second one. It's the Real Bodybuilding Podcast. And that's, I try and bring on different guests each week. And we get deep into like their life and bodybuilding and how it connects. And we go over now to New Jersey. And we, guys, sister, and a guy who had asked a question. I'm sure our viewers are probably going to ask a question too. I'll ask the question. You're not moving, are you? No. <laughs> I, uh, I, I like to make my life really complicated when I'm dieting for shows. So um, when I was getting ready for Chicago and uh, then Tampa, I um, decided to redo my wood floors. So I had all my wood floors ripped out and redone. So I have everything that's in my house is in my three-car garage in my basement. So I have everything here. Plus, I put a huge um, order in for clothing because I, I sell out of my clothes pretty fast. Um, my uh, my quadro line. So I ordered about ten thousand dollars worth of clothing. So my house is full in my basement, in my garage of all my furniture, bedroom stuff, couches, and then all my quadro <laughs> stuff. So I've been living like a fucking gypsy for the past three weeks. <laughs> living the life. So let's go right to the topic again. The topic: Ruli Winkler. Now, Ruli Winkler for the last couple of years, last two three years, there's a sensation at Oxygen Gym. It's called the magic mirror. Call it what you want to call it. But nobody makes it more dramatic, more theatrical than Ruli Winkler. And of course, yesterday, Bader Budai posting another video on his Instagram of Ruli Winkler doing what he does best. But people did take note of the level of conditioning that he is showing in the most recent video that he posted yesterday. So guys, Sister Nino, let's go to you first. First of all, what do you make of these progress vi videos, progress pictures, the one that we see in the Magic Mirror, do you see them as real progress pictures, videos, or do you see them as more hybrid entertainment for bodybuilding fans? Um, you know, I was really against posting progress pictures uh, in my career. This is probably the first show uh, this year that I did that I actually post some pictures because, you know, talking to people, you know, Jay was like, you know, the fans want to see that shit. Um, th with me, if you're going to post a progress picture, you guys, you're talking about the video of him doing the abs and thigh shot, right? Sure, yeah. So my thing is, Roly always looks impressive from the waist up, and where he loses a lot of ground is from the waist down. So the only way I could really say I would be – and I'm not saying Roly's not impressive because that was an impressive video that he posted. But if you're going to post a progress shot, um, you have to include your flaws, your weaknesses. And it, I would be more impressed if he posted a full body shot. Because his legs and separation and detail, especially in his hamstrings, glutes, and quads, is where he usually is flat or not as conditioned as his upper body. So I would be really impressed if he posted a full body shot and he was um, his upper body was just as good as his lower body. Then I would be um, very impressed. But you very rarely see 
guys that have weaker body parts show them. So he looks very impressive, but everybody looks impressive in that mirror, and everybody looks impressive, A, by themselves, standing next to nobody. Um, so I, I was I impressed? Yeah. Did it say to, in my head, Roly's going to win the Olympia? No. Who went? Uh, I think I'm easier to please than Guy is because I was fucking blown away. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, okay, look, first of all, I do understand Guy's point. His legs are a little bit of an issue, but I never thought they were the biggest issue. In my opinion, uh, Roly's biggest problem has always been his waist. He doesn't have a distension, but he has, a, he has like thicker obliques. And last year when he showed up at the Arnold and he had brought his obliques in, people were blown away. I think if he can do that again and keep the waist tight, and I'm just I'm looking down because I'm looking at the video right now. But if you can keep the waist tight and uh, get a little bit harder than this video, he's going to be tough to beat. Like my 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 pick for the Olympia right now is is Brandon Curry, but it's only because of the level of conditioning and fullness and muscularity he's bringing. But if Roley can match Brandon's conditioning, it's going to be tough to beat him. Dave, you know. Jay Cutler made a good point when I had him interviewed him yesterday where he said that, you know, when you when you try to figure out, you know, who the front runner for the Olympia is, you look at the year before. Ruley was third last year. There's no Phil Heath, there's no there's no Sean Roden in the Olympia. So theoretically, Ruley's next in line. He beat Bonac, he beat Dexter, you know, he beat Curry last year. Yes, he did come into the Arnold this year and he was off. He was off. We knew he was off. He got to Oxygen Gym with eight weeks to go, and he was out of shape. So he probably shouldn't have competed, but he made the commitment. He did the shows. He was, I thought he was a gift that he, that he got fourth, actually, last year, uh, this past year, excuse me, at the Arnold Classic. So, but this was not a rep true representative of what we've been seeing of Ruli Winkler lately. Um, is his conditioning an issue with consistency? Yes. I can't see him coming into this Olympia off, you know, because I know there's too much riding on the line. I, I personally think he's the guy to beat. I think he's got better legs than Curry. I think that Curry's got a, a more aesthetic physique. I think that if you, you know, more people would, I would rather look like, uh, you know, Curry in terms of athleticism goes. But let's face it, historically, the Mr. Olympia competition has always been the biggest, freakiest guy. And, you know, and ruley has got that going on, you know. The question is, will he bring enough conditioning to show his gifts off to their best? I think well, if he looks like he did last year, where he plays third, I think he's going to win the Olympia. Well, Dave, let's just let's just stick to the video that we saw yesterday. And, and again, yeah, but you know, I said that's that's right. magic. Again, there are magic know? mirrors it's involved. Magic mirror. yes, it's not that, that the mirror is making him look better. It's it's just not a true representation of what we're going to see on stage next to other guys. Like the like guy said, we we got to see him stand on the stage, you know, with other people. It's it's hard to tell. Yeah, he looks great, but you know what? I, if I got in that mirror right now and I'm fucking 190 pounds and I posed and I, I'm ripped, people would be like, holy shit, look how great he looks. You know, I'm standing alone. You know, I'm not, they would just see how, how lean I was. So I think Ruley's probably in way better shape now than he was the night right. before the, Olymp the Arnold. But, you know, is that enough to beat Curry? Is that enough to beat, have it, that's, is that enough to beat Bonac? Bonac, I think he to got, me, is going to be say, one of the guys that's going to be the most dangerous up there because he's the most complete. So I think if Ruli is going to win the Olympia, it's going to be because he's the biggest guy up there and he has the conditioning. Who would? I think you guys are giving too much credit to the mirror. How many, how many jabronis do you think have gone out to, to <laughs> Kuwait to fucking work out there and train at that gym? You would see a lot more photos if that mirror was that magical. I mean, yeah, the lighting's good, but it's fucking Ruli Winkler. Like, he looks good. It's not, I don't think I could go stand in the mirror and look like Roly. He looks phenomenal. He's third in the world. And I think, be, like, uh, I think, like Dave said, because he has the extra time and he's getting ready for the show, he's going to come in shredded. Now, that being said, I have to disagree with Dave about the legs. I think Brandon has put on a lot of size. The last, uh, the last progress photo he posted, his legs looked significantly bigger than they were at the Arnold. So he's going to look more complete, I think, than Roly will. Roly will be bigger up top, but Brandon will be more complete head to toe. Guy, I, let me go. Yeah, Guy, go ahead. I mean, Dave was talking about going off of, of you know, he, theoretically, Roly took third, right? Well, if we're going off theories, then 
Sean Roden took second one year, and then he was the front runner for the following year, and then took fifth, and then went from fifth to first. So I don't think we can go off of paper trails from last year because theore- theoretically, in the past three years, that paper trail hasn't mean, meant shit in the Olympia if you go off of the past three years based on Sean's placing. So I wouldn't say that Roley is a front runner or, or, or the next in line. I would say in order for Roley to win, he has to beat – but I think I agree that Bonac is the most complete, and I think Bonac has the best legs out of all three of those guys, um, and is the most complete top to bottom. Roley's the freak. Brandon's the most consistent uh, the past three years. So based on that, that's I would say Roley's the biggest. Brandon has been the most consistent, and um, Bonac is the most complete. And I I'm very good friends with Roley, and I would love nothing. Uh, than to see Roley win the Olympia. I, if Roley has to, if these guys aren't licking their fucking chops at going into this Olympia, <laughs> then I, I don't even know what to say because this Olympia is so fucking wide open. It's not even funny. Well, so let me go back to you because you know we we're totally we're talking about the the evolution now uh, of Roley Winkler, right? And, and for the predominant part of his career, he's been known as a mass monster. And, and I don't want to say just as that, but I, I don't know if people really qualified him as someone who was going to be that um, at the upper echelon. They always just kind of saw him as the fan favorite freak on stage, right? That's- now you transition into what we're seeing now. How do you qualify him now as an upper level Olympia title contender? I think because people never saw Roley in shape. Like Roley's never been in Kai Green shape. Exactly. And I, and I think that's the problem. When you, If you want to be looked at like Kai Green, if you want to be looked at like Phil Heath, if you want to be looked at like Ronnie Coleman, you got to bring that condition. And Roley is a freak. He's got he's got as much muscle to stand with those guys. But if you stood Ronnie Coleman 2000 next to Roley Winkler at his best that we've seen so far, one guy would look like he was still four weeks out. So it's just I think people are seeing they love him because he's a freak. They love him because he has a structure. But they want to see before he's ever entered into that category with the guys I mentioned – He's got to bring the the freaky conditioning to with to combine with the freaky muscle. But I do have one thing to say uh, about Guy's point. I think Brandon is more complete than Bonac. <laughs> Sorry, different different debate altogether. But I think from the I, waist, just, I think from the waist down, Bonac has a better from waist down than than those than those other guys. Uh, well, if we're talking about body parts, yeah, but if I'm talking about a complete physique head to toe, with Brandon's new improvements, <laughs> I'm I'm really finding it hard to pick out an area where I feel like he's lagging. I would have to see them stand next to each other to see who's more complete. But yeah, based yeah. on based on last year, Phonax the most complete in my eyes. I agree with that guy. I can I can say that according yeah, based on last year. I'm going I'm basing my opinion on uh, Brandon's most recent progress photo that he posted. Well, Which so, means nothing because we haven't seen him on stage when he's all sucked out. Yeah, but we're just we're playing a game here anyway. None of this yeah. means anything. No, but once he drains, pulls all the water out, the problem is he doesn't really have the, the level of muscularity in his legs that like a Ruley does. And I think that sucks down a little bit. And you know what? There's no killers in this lineup, so it, it might not matter. He, he might have enough, you know, enough there with a few improvements from the Arnold that, we, that he pulls it off. I, I'm not saying that. I, I, I think when you look at Brandon's physique, aesthetically, it's the physique you want to pick. But when they all stand next to each other on that stage, you know, I think that it's going to see, you know, the, 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 the muscle factor is going to play to Ruley's advantage if it's conditioned, you know. Well, well, Dave, let me introduce this because we're on that topic and we talk about the direction, right? Because ever since last year, that has been a debate, a, an emphasis debate as far as what the direction of the open class is. Are we going more towards the Mats monster or are we going towards complete? And it seems as, again, Fuad's assertion is that Brandon is more complete. But then when you look at muscularity, you look at the free factor, that obviously is going to go, the nod is going to go to Ruli Winkler. Could this be a test of that put on the line this year on that stage? I mean, I, I always think that I always disagree with what direction the judges are going in. I always think the judges judge what's up there. And right. some years it's a more aesthetic physique that, that seems to be the better physique. And some years it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a more muscularity. It's a more muscular physique that seems to be the, the, the physique that they're looking for. That's why when you see inconsistencies in the judging, 
in pro shows, people are like, oh, they were going for, for shape, and now they, this guy, well, no, they're going for what's the best up there. The, the judges are just human. They're looking at what's up there. What, what do I feel is the best physique up there? And that's what they pick. So with this year's Olympia being wide open, you don't really have a precedent. If, if Sean Roden was in the lineup, then you'd say the more aesthetic look is really what they're going for because that's Mr. Olympia. Now you've got to match up with Mr. Olympia. But there is no Mr. Olympia. Well, the extras in the lineup. But there's no reigning Mr. Olympia out there. So... It's going to be whatever the judges think looks good, and hey, this is what we want to deem as the next Mr. Olympia. I don't know. I, it, it's, it's going to be an interesting uh, decision, and I don't think that there's any preconceived notions at this point. I think the, these judges uh, and the powers that be are really interested to see who's going to look good up there in this lineup of what we have to choose from. You know, I, I think really the, the person who really missed the boat here Man, did Big Ramy blow it not competing earlier this year and qualifying. Whoa, did he blow it because this was a totally missed opportunity for him for sure. Well, that's that actually I was going to say I was going to say something and I, and I don't mean that this as disrespect whatsoever. But do you think whoever wins the Olympia this year is going to be looked at as one of the best? And I'm not saying because they they're not the best cuz they won the show, but based on the lack of top echelon Mr. Olympias and people that have knocked on the door that are not in the show this year, making it wide open due to the fact that guys are not, Phil's not there, Sean's not there, Ramy's not there. So you take three of the heavy hitters out, you have a 2019 Mr. Olympia. Is that going to be considered one of the best in the world based on the fact that he's he's won an Olympia that probably had the weakest lineup in the past fucking God knows how many years? Because Mr. Olympia is not even at, at the show this year. I think uh, I think you're right to a certain degree, but I also think if Sean Rode was in the lineup, Brandon would beat him. Mm. So I don't, I don't, but I, but then again, also in saying that, wait, wait I, are you talking about the recent Arnold Classic version? I'm talking about the Arnold Classic version or the progress photo Brandon I'm talking about from like a last week that he posted. But I also think that. Uh, Sean will never get the respect that he deserves because I don't think anybody thinks that he really beat Phil. They, he beat uh, diminished Phil. So even with Sean's Olympia, I don't think he's going to get the full respect of the Olympia the way Jay did when he beat Ronnie. But Jay, so, Jay, Jay beat a Ronnie that was fucking literally a damn near halfway out, one foot on a banana peel and one in a casket at that point. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. No, he, wasn't, saying, he was missing half a lot. Right. Yeah. His, he, his, his physique was starting to deteriorate that year anyway. Because he came back the following year and looked fucking his, his lat was deteriorating and his bicep was deteriorating. So I mean you're that, that comparison is the same from Jay and Ronnie as it is from Sean to, to Brandon. Okay. I can I could give you that. I can give you that. You're right. But Jay, I think, solidified it by winning three more times. Oh, I agree. Well, you, you so, know, that can't happen, obviously, now. I know I know that, but I'm just saying I know, I know that, but I'm just saying Sean I think is going to leave a little bit of a legacy of not earning the full respect of being a Mr. Olympia because Phil was a little off. And the same thing goes for the winner this year. Like you said, Phil's not here. Kai's not here. The previous Mr. Olympia is not here. So they're also going to have a little asterisk next to their name. Right. Now, yeah. if Sean gets cleared and then competes next year and, and regains the title, that will, I think, cement him as, as a legitimate guy. Yeah. But but wait but will it really though is is Sean ever gonna have his due if he doesn't get to beat Phil? Well, you're, I mean, if you're looking at he beat Phil no, already. No, but I mean a a a hundred percent. Like but I'll give you Phil's I forty. The, He's not gonna get better. He's gonna get worse. Uh, <clears throat> Ronnie was forty. He looked pretty good at forty. And Phil, <laughs> Phil, remember Phil was a late starter, so I still think you know minus his stomach is issue last year, he's still pretty fresh. I think Phil and Ramy should have been doing this fucking yeah, show. I agree honest. with the guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that, too. I mean, Christ, I mean, you, if you could have had – you could have, you could have had one of the most – I'm not saying it's unentertaining, but just as far as a, um, from a roster standpoint, if you add in Kai, Ramy, Phil, this is going to be what, one of the most talked about Mr. Olympias ever. Yeah. If you yeah. added those three guys in. So, so you know a guy out of those three – if we are to have a last-minute entry, who would it be? Phil. Even if you take, all right, you're going to take Rami out, Kai or yeah. Phil. Phil. Because both have been dropping hints. Wait, are you like asking who I would win or who I would think would enter last minute? <laughs> who do you, who? Who do you, if you had to take a bet, 
who's going to enter the Olympia last minute, who would it be? It would be if I had to bet, it'd be Phil. If who I had what? to bet, if I had to bet, it would be Kai, because because Phil is like in India somewhere right now, selling supplements, and yeah. Kai still looks like he's fucking ready to go on stage at yeah, any moment. Looks like that for the past fucking five years. But, but that's my point. He could walk on any stage and fucking destroy everybody. Like, it's so frustrating to somebody that wants to compete to see Kai walking around at 300 pounds shredded. It could easily walk on the Olympia stage with a little bit of effort and probably win this year. Yeah. See, I'm going over the fact that I know Kai personally, and I know Kai will never compete again. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, yeah. I agree. You know what? Funny, yeah. Jay, Jay made a good point about Phil, too. He's like, Dave, you know, you, you underestimate, you know, a lot of people think, well, you know, maybe Phil needs the money, and why wouldn't he want to win 400 grand? And he said, you know, when you have like a couple million people following you on social media, you have the you have a very very good ability to make money if you put your your mind to it and focus because there's so many people who are looking at your stuff that you can pretty much sell anything. He's like, you know, so that's a very powerful tool. He said business wise. So I think you know, look, he Jay feels that that's what Phil is really focusing on now is is selling, is is doing business, and if he's doing that. You know it's very hard to focus on you know competing when you're when you're involved with business. I mean, Phil proved it with the other company that he had left, when he left Muscle Tech and he did you know a gifted. He gifted, just couldn't yeah. focus. He was in the middle of you know training for you know the you know his his Olympias every year and doing appearances. So the business didn't do well. You know now that he's done, I think that he's he's shifting all his efforts into that into the promotion of his line. I think he looks good and he's in shape because he's using that to promote the, the sale of his uh, products. Let's wrap this one up, but just a point on Ruli Winkler. I'm going to go around the horn. Given what you've seen progress-wise, given what you saw on the Olympia stage last year and what Dave you know, asserts as far as why he may have not come in at his best, coming in late to Oxygen Gym, training and prepping for the 2019 Arnold Classic, given what we have seen recently in his progress pictures, Fu, I'll start with you. Do you think we'll see the most conditioned version of Ruli Winkler on the 2019 Olympia stage? Based on the most recent photos, yeah, I think you. I think we're going to see a probably the best version period of Ruli muscularity and conditioning. But I don't know if it'll be enough. Guy, I'm going to say that I, I, I like I said earlier. I don't know because of his legs, but I will say this: if Ruli is 101 percent, he will beat Brandon. If Roley's 99%, it goes to Brandon. Mm. Dave, final word. I, I think that the, the person who's maybe the most dangerous in this top three that we've been discussing could be William Bonac, and we keep all forgetting about him because I, I think he's the most complete um, in terms of no lacking body parts. His, his said- one thing that is missing is that he's short, and I think that's a disadvantage on the Mr. Olympia stage. Short never really went over too well on the Mr. Olympia stage. Arnold stage, different story. Not Mr. Olympia stage. So Brandon has a Mr. Olympia look to him. Uh, Ruley has a Mr. Olympia look to them because they're both big, you know, structured people. I think that uh, if Ruley, I, I think the Olympia is in Ruley's own hands. If he comes in at his best, I think he wins. So you agree with me? Yeah. <laughs> But we're going to put it out there I'll right be. now. If Ruli Winkler comes in at 101%, he will be your 2019 Mr. Olympia. Yeah, if he's no. 99, he, he, Brandon's taking it. Okay, well, guy's on the fence here. He's, like, playing this 99, 100, 1 yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because no, I'm going to tell you this. No, no, no because no, you, no, you, you can't. No, 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 listen. No, stop. We stay, are fucking, you're no, no, make, listen make, to me. Listen. Make a decision. Listen, I, I, because of me, if I compete and I'm 2% off, I look like I'm 20% off. If Roley is 1% off, he is not going to be good enough. If I he get it. nails his conditioning and he's 100% that day, which I haven't seen, he will win the Olympia. If he is not at his 100%, it is Brandon. Okay, I get what you're saying, but make a decision. Is he going to be 101 or is he going to be 99? I make a decision based on a picture I saw from the waist yeah. fucking up. I can't do that. <laughs> That's what we're doing. It's an iron debate. You're supposed to guess. Is he going to be 101 or not? Based off of his previous performances, I have never seen him 100%. So I will say, uh, I, I'm hoping he proves me wrong. I'm going to say I don't think he's going to be 100%. Don't you think he was 100% well, last year mean, at the Olympia? No, no. I've never, think, I've never seen Roley peeled out of his fucking mind, ever. Okay, ever. So, that, so that means after going around in a circle, I'm right. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because wait, 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 I, wait, 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 so you're saying. I'm giving, I said Brandon. 
Yeah, I said right. Brandon. You said no. originally you said Roly if he's 101. Yeah, they said if, if <laughs> he asked if Roly nails his conditioning. 100%. I said yes, he wins. If he doesn't, Brandon. So, Fuad, you're on. Okay, right. Fuad, to, to clarify, <laughs> Fuad, if Roly's on 101%, Brandon's at ninety nine percent. Who takes the Who takes the title? Okay, I'm not gonna play this if shit. I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. Brandon is gonna win the Mister Olympia. Bonac is gonna be second, and Roly is gonna be third, and Dexter will be fourth. That's uh, it. Crickets. <laughs> That's it. You guys don't have to agree. We'll see. In, we'll see in a month. Well, we still have uh, three weeks. Three and weeks. We will certainly do our predictions show. <laughs> certainly around the time of the Olympia. But that's going to do it for this episode of Iron Debate. Special thanks to Guy Cicernino, Fuad Abiyad, Dave Palumbo, and of course, our producer, Tyler Shore. I'm Sadiq Farouki. We'll see you next time.